So this is an interesting time for psychiatry because the uh, latest edition of the, the DSM, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual for Psychiatric Disorders, um, has, has just been published in May 2013. The DSM is really um, important in enabling people to sort of reliably um, identify groups of patients um, that, where there are clear sort of clinical predictions. And in that way, ADHD has really performed very well. I mean, it's a very good predictor of both um, uh, medical treatment responses and also increasingly there's good data on psychological treatments. So what are the changes that have come about in the latest edition, the DSM-5, um, the fifth version of the DSM? And there are interesting changes for ADHD and most of those changes are to do with um, adult ADHD. And in fact, there's only very uh, limited changes for child ADHD. And so one of the first things was thinking about the way that ADHD symptoms present in adults. And what the DSM um, have done is they've provided sort of more detailed descriptions of the kinds of symptoms um, and the way that people experience um, ADHD symptoms as adults and at different ages. And so that kind of at least helps in providing a kind of better description of the way the disorder looks in adults. And so the current criteria says um, you should have some symptoms of ADHD as a child and then in adulthood it would be sufficient to have five symptoms of either inattention or hyperactivity impulsivity. And this slightly um, sort of broader criteria, if you like, does seem to allow people who are significantly impaired by ADHD symptoms to come into the formal diagnosis. The other big change was thinking about the age of onset because previously uh, the criteria was to have symptoms and impairment before the uh, age of seven. And now the criteria has been changed to symptoms but not necessarily impairment before the age of 12. And uh, the final um, sort of key change in ADHD was um, sort of getting away from the idea that there were these fixed subtypes. So under the DSM-4, there was inattentive subtype and the hyperactivity uh, impulsivity subtype and the combined subtype. But what we actually know is that for the majority of patients with ADHD, when they're very young, in their preschool years, they often present only with hyperactive impulsive symptoms. And then in the middle school years, they often develop inattentive symptoms, so they become combined type. But then by the time they're adults, the hyperactive impulsive symptoms tend to decline as you get older, whereas the inattentive symptoms tend to persist. And in our own data from the UK, for example, we found that half of children who with combined subtype um, had inattentive subtype as an adult. So these are really very unstable, these um, subtype classifications. And for that reason, the DSM now refer to these as clinical presentations, you know, recognizing that um, they're just describing what are the prominent features at a particular point in time, but they can uh, change at different developmental ages. So I think overall, the DSM-4 changes, in my view, have really been quite helpful they um, sort of clarify um, a, a few key points based on, on sort of what I think is a very good uh, foundation of evidence base. Um, and they do allow for um, adults' ADHD to be diagnosed more easily. Um, and I think it's sort of more accurately identifying patients who both have the symptoms and the impairments of ADHD and really warrant, you know, warrant um, effective treatments. <laughs>